Dear students, welcome and thank you for tuning in. We are continuing our discussion about the product architecture as part of the product design and development course. We are going to continue our discussion about the functional elements and the physical elements. We talked before that we have ma been making decisions about the platform that we want to use, the planning phase, and then the concept development. We talked about concept decisions, and now we're going to talk about decomposition decisions. And uh, assuming that we have our functional element or the functionality of our product which is the description of the steps that will be taken in order to use our product we now go to the physical elements of our product because we need to get into more into the details and the components and the parts of my product so the physical elements of a product are typically organized into several major building blocks physical building blocks and which we call chunks like this here we have our product it has chunks which are collection of elements that perform a specific function and in each chunk we have this the modules that they are interacting with each other we want to keep this as simple as possible so each building block will make will perform a function and they are named chunks each chunk is then made up of a collection of components that implement the functions of the product so we can say that this blue box is a chunk and the chunk has inside it multiple components that implement the function of the product and the architecture uh, of the product is the uh, scheme by which the function, functional element of the product are arranged into physical chunks, chunks and by which the chunks interact. So this is the interaction, this is how, what we mean by architecture, are the chunks, the components in each chunk and how these components are interacting with each other. Uh, so the arrangement of functional element into physical chunks which become the building blocks of the product or family of products. This is what we want uh, to focus on. Now, we have two types uh, of uh, architecture. The first type of ar architecture is or the most um, used one or the most popular uh, is called the modular architecture. And the modular architecture uh, has the following two properties. So chunk Chunks in that architecture implements one or a few functional elements in their entirety. So we can say this is just one function uh, and um, that uh, or a few, a few uh, functions uh, entirely. And the other thing that the interaction between chunks are well defined and are generally fundamental to the primary function of the product. So we know that the uh, interactions are defined and um, they are very specific uh, to the functionality, which gives us is when we have that thing, uh, when we have well-defined interactions between the chunks, uh, such modular allows a design to change. If we want to make any changes, we can just change that chunk without requiring the change of the entire uh, product or the functionality of the entire product. So. When we have specialized functions, identified few functions for each chunk, for example, this one, things will be easy if we want to modify it, right? The other type of modular uh, architecture, we call, or we define it as something called integral architecture. And the integral architecture exhibits, uh, each chunk will exhibit one or more, uh, multiple functions actually and not only one function or a few functions, multiple functions. And they are characterized in the following. So uh, first, functional elements of the product are implemented using more than one chunk. So we don't have the uh, specification now that we each chunk is performing one function. So we can have multiple chunks that perform a particular function. So there's a lot of integration there. A single chunk implements many functional elements, so uh, it's not just one uh, specialized functionality. And also the interaction between the chunks are L-defined and may be uh, uh, incidental to the primary function uh, functions of the product. So in the integral architecture, we can see that all of them are interacting, all these chunks are interacting, the components are interacting, and um, there is integration between the functionality. Now, why do we use this integral uh, architecture? Uh, 
when we we think about integral architecture it will often be desi uh, designated with or designed with the highest possible performance in mind so if you want to optimize and have high performance uh, with a small number of let's say components a few chunks then we are using the integral uh, architecture uh, rather than the modular architecture if we want to make things simpler uh, and we're okay with having multiple components so that if you one of the comp or the chunks that we need to modify or change just go to that chunk and change the module and the components in that chunk then we go with the modular uh, architecture so I hope this now uh, show you the difference between mod modular and integral architectures I want to keep in mind you want to keep in mind that products are rarely strictly modular or integral rather you can find them that they are um, hybrid and that they are more or less modular uh, than um, you know a comparative product or the more or less integral than another competitive uh, or comparative uh, product so i hope this will <clears throat> provide us with a, an understanding of when we design our product what type of architecture we need to look for for our for my point of um, uh, view uh, we would like to use the modular <coughs> uh, architecture rather than the integral because it will be simpler we will have a, a well-defined um, chunks with well-defined uh, components and each one will do a function so that when we modify something and we uh, change anything it will be easy to do without changing the entire product i will uh, talk about an exam two examples i'll show you two examples to show the difference between um, the modular and integral architecture so the first example this is it we're going to use a trailer example this is a very simple trailer a trailer that we are looking at uh, in this schematic and it represents a modular architecture in which that you can see these are the components, the box, the hitch, fairing, bed, and springs, and the wheels. And each one of them is doing one specific task. So we can call these are chunks, and those are the functionality that each chunk is going to do. So the box protects the cargo from weather, the bed supports the cargo load, and the wheels transfer load to uh, road in order to for mobility. So this is a very simple uh, modular architecture and this is what I hope that we are doing our product as the prototypes using because we don't want to go too into the complexity of the integral architecture which will look like this. This is another trailer uh, but it has a diff you know, different design and this is uh, using the integral architecture and you can see that each one of these uh, now chunks or components have you know multiple functions. For example the upper half is protecting the cargo also it supports the load as well as suspend trailer structure so uh, this is what we uh, how would we define an integral architecture that we have uh, one uh, chunk uh, that is performing multiple tasks and also we have uh, sorry we have also a task that is uh, completed or performed by multiple chunks for example the protect the cargo from weather is done by the upper half and also by the lower half and also by the spring slot uh, covers uh, i hope this will cl this clarifies the idea of uh, modular and integral architectures um, you need to decide which one do you want to use i'm fine with either way with either one but I would uh, recommend using the modular because it will make things simpler for the design and also for modification if we need to do so. Before we end, I want you to think about these two questions as a tension quiz uh, and um, give yourself a couple of minutes to see which one is which and what's the correct answer. I can, if you read this, and um, you can stop the video and then uh, see if your answers are correct. Uh, for this, the first one product architecture is the assignment of functional elements of the a product to physical building blocks of the, so it's b for the second one uh, one of the two properties of the modular architecture is that the modular architecture which is the each one of each chunk will perform a specific task is actually uh, the interaction between chunks are well defined and are generally fundamental to the primary to the primary function of the product 
Um, I hope this clarifies and uh, identifies and defines modular and integral uh, architecture. Uh, thank you for watching. Until next video. Bye.